Welcome in to True Silly Diamonds for Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. We got MLB, college football, NFL all coming your way. So let me know in the comments below what your picks are for tonight, for this weekend. All is welcome, guys. It does help out the algorithm. I'll be in there chiming in with you as well. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up here, game three. Winner move on, loser go home. It is... On ESPN, 708 Eastern Time, the New York Mets, Milwaukee Brewers. Best of three. This is game three. Series tied up. One game apiece. With the Brewers actually knocking two home runs in the bottom of the eighth to come back and come back fashion. New York Mets did leave nine men on base in that game. The winner plays the Philadelphia Phillies in the division round. It's Jose Quintana, the lefty going for the Metropolitans. Tobias Myers for the brew crew brewers minus 120 home favorites seven in the hook being the total do got to bring up that game yesterday also through two games here the new york mets offensively 15 hits nine walks they've had guys on base pretty much this whole series the problem is they're just two of 11 with runners in scoring position in yesterday's game now they do have uh jose quintana on the hill here the veteran 35 year old colombian Versus Milwaukee in the final series of the regular season. Remember, guys, these two teams played in the final series of the regular season, scheduled series. Then, of course, the Mets went on to play the Braves in those makeup games. They also, interestingly enough, played in the opening series of the year. But either way, in that game, uh, Quintana, nine strikeouts and just four and a third. Kind of like that past performance, missing a lot of bats there. And actually, in his last six starts... He's four and one with a point uh, with a 0.74 ERA. That's 36 innings, only three earned runs. He's riding a hot left hand here. Guy I'm looking to bet on. Now he's up against Tobias Myers. Nothing against him. 26 year old, former six round pick, nine and six on the season, three flat ERA. He also had a good pass performance there against the Mets. Went four innings with five strikeouts, only one hit given up. Looking at the later innings, guys, in the bullpen. Now remember the Mets. They didn't go with Diaz late late in the game. He threw 40 pitches the day before. Now getting that off, I think he'll be back and ready to go for the Mets bullpen. Milwaukee, they've used a bunch of arms as well. But given, you know, the pitches thrown in this situation, win or go home, I do think all hands are going to be on deck from both bullpens in the later innings. Although that is kind of a tricky handicap, but that's how I'm, that's how I'm going after this. And guys, in terms of the bet, I think you got to pay attention to that. How many runners the Mets have gotten on base here compared to the Brewers? Overall, I think plus one ten. Hey, I think the dogs bark, and I think the Mets punch their ticket. They win Game Three, and they face the Phillies. So let's jump on the Mets, listing Jose Quintana as the starter. Risk a hundred to win one hundred and ten. Plus one ten on the Mets to to lead us off on Thursday. We'll talk the NFL game. Up next, NFC South division, ri- division, yeah, rivalry here, division matchup. Tampa Bay Bucks, Atlanta Falcons, Dirty Birds, minus one in the hook at home, 44 being the total in downtown Atlanta, Mercedes Benz Stadium. Both of these two teams coming off of wins last week, although in very different fashion. Tampa Bay was up 24 0 over the Eagles. They were up early, uh, looking dominant. Actually, they were in 22 plays in the Eagles territory before Philadelphia ran one play across the 50 yard line. So right out the gate, it was, uh, it it was, it was all Tampa Bay Baker Mayfield, kind of a sleeper 10 and two touchdown to interception ratio out the gate and looking at Atlanta side of things, they did beat the new Orleans saints last week. You got to give them credit, but they got a special teams and a defensive touchdown. Can't always count on that. No offensive touchdowns. Don't like seeing that. And kind of preparing for this week in the NFL, I read I read a pretty good uh, note here from the gold sheet. You can go, you can check that out for just five bucks, guys, at wagertalk.com. In terms of in the NFL, fading newness on a short week, meaning like you know less preparation time and and guys not maybe not fully into the system. And sure enough, the Falcons, new head coach, new OC, DC, new quarterback as well. Don't like that. They just lost Troy Anderson. Their their leading tacker is tackler as well. A lot of people thinking, you know, home teams Thursday night in the NFL. I want to be betting on that because the travel, I want to be fading the travel. 
Although since 2019, I think a lot of that is baked in the line. It shows in the numbers. Home teams on Thursday night in the NFL are just 39 and 52 against the spread since 2019. That's just 42% ATS. Don't like that trend, guys. I like Tampa Bay overall. Baker Mayfield playing the better football at the quarterback position. Plus one and a half. We'll put it in our pocket. Another dog barking there with the Buccaneers over the Falcons. We got college football up next. Remember, premium picks, wagertalk.com. We're talking one of the two college football games on the show. The other one is 5% max limit, top rated play at wagertalk.com. You can check that out. Also, uh, the deals, guys, we got, uh, what, $20 off the seven-day all-access. So if uh, you check out Drew Martin, wagertalk.com, you can get all the plays for the next seven days or just go with the 5% max limit for tonight. All right, let's break down the game. 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. local time here. El Paso, Texas, beautiful part of the country for an in-state battle here on CBS Sports Network in the Sun Bowl. It's UTEP hosting Sam Houston State. The Bearcats, that is Sam Houston State, minus 10, minus 10 and a half as the road favorite, depending where you're shopping, 50 being the total. Looking at Sam Houston State side of things, overall, guys, just looking at the records, uh, they look like the lot better team. I mean, UTEP, by the way, is 0-4, and they have a loss to an FCS Southern Utah as well. So tough to get any worse record-wise. But we'll break it down either way. I got some interesting stuff for you on this one. Sam Houston State defensively, not good at all. They're pretty much 100 or worse in the top categories. So, And they're a team that doesn't run a whole lot of offensive tempo, meaning like running a bunch of plays. So when your defense is not very good and you don't run a whole lot of plays to score a lot of points, I don't necessarily like betting on that type of profile, laying double digits, but they did win in comeback fashion last week over Texas State. Their quarterback, Hunter Watson, over 100 rush yards and two touchdowns on the ground. Looking at the UTEP side of things, they're still looking for their first win under new head coach, Scotty Walden. They're 0-3 against FBS. They lost to Southern Utah. They did stay within the number against Liberty. They're coming off of two road games, Liberty and Colorado State. And they had a bye week. And one thing I noticed going back and watching that game, UTEP and Colorado State, is they made a change at the quarterback position. And in the second half, their backup quarterback, Cade McConnell, came in. He actually went 19 of 29 for 220 yards and two touchdown passes, one of 28 yards, one of over 50 yards. And it's an interesting dynamic that I actually like to bet on. A lot of people out there, you know, betting on sports would see a guy lose his job at the quarterback position and just be like, ah, he's awful. You know, forget about that guy. I don't want to bet on him. But actually, in this situation, he was the incumbent quarterback from last year. And then in the offseason, he lost his job to the transfer from Austin P. Skyler Lockler. So they've gotten off to this rough start with really Cade McConnell not being the quarterback for the majority of the time. And now he comes in in the second half, has a pretty good performance. And, oh, by the way, they have a new head coach with a bye week to prepare. I actually think we're going to get a pretty good performance here from UTEP. Now, I know that's tough to say from an 0-4 team, but I do like that profile. And spot-wise, this is about as bad as it gets for Sam Houston State. They played that neutral site game in the the Houston Texans um, home field in an NFL stadium, comeback fashion against Texas State. They win the game. Now they have a short week on the road to El Paso. You guys know the state of Texas. That's not an easy trip. And UTEP is playing the Thursday night game with a bye week. You almost never see that. The home team has the bye week. The away team, short rest with travel. Hey, spot-wise, it points towards UTEP here, guys. We can get the 10 in the hook. UTEP plus 10 and a half. If you're a gambler, how about 310 on the money line? A little bonus pick there. Miners plus 310 money line for the show. We're going plus 10 and a hook. UTEP over Sam Houston State. We got Tampa Bay plus one and a half against the Atlanta Falcons. And the Mets plus 110 with the dogs barking in Milwaukee. So, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Smash that like button. Comment below. We'll be back tomorrow breaking it down college football, NFL as well, guys. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Hopefully the dogs are barking.